Uh, it's always a good day when we're reviewing turkey. Russell's Reserve 10-year, arguably the best value in the wild turkey lineup. It was developed for Jimmy Russell's 45th year at the distillery. It used to be 101 proof and then changed to 90 proof back in 2005. For me, Russell's has always been a little bit spicier, had a little bit more oak, uh, oak punch than its arch rival Eagle Rare from Buffalo Trace. Now with that said, the 2022 Russell's Reserve 10-year is here. When new batches are released, there's always a possibility of some profile changes. I really think we did see that with the new launch and the new bottle design from Wild Turkey 101. Has it happened to Russell's 10-year as well? Let's compare and find out. It's the Mash and Drum. Mash and Drum. What's up folks, welcome to the Master and Drum, I'm Jason C. Today's review I've been really looking forward to. Not only is Wild Turkey my favorite bourbon brand in the land, but I still think the 10 year is generally overshadowed by higher proof offerings, both from other distilleries and Wild Turkey themselves, as with Rare Breed, Russell's with our single barrel, and even Wild Turkey 101. All right, so let's just dive in here, guys. Here are the stats. Russell's Reserve 10-year-old bourbon. This is the 2022 version. Bottled at 90 proof, aged at least 10 years. Generally, for wild turkey, 200 barrels and below is considered a small batch, but with demand in the growing community of bourbon sippers, uh, it could be higher at this stage. Best part is always the price on this one. This I can get here in Ohio for 38 bucks. Now, of course, we're gonna be comparing it to uh, an older batch to see if there's been any you know, fluctuation or change or anything like that. Uh, so let's go for it, guys. Here we go, going right in the nose. Ain't wasting no time. So right in the beginning, immediately, I get like that nice citrus punch, a lot of orange, uh, orange peel. A little bit of butter pecan here, a little butter pecan. A lot of vanilla, but the more I smell this, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm surprised at how fruit forward it is. I'm getting I'm getting like juicy fruit gum on the nose, which I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's a, a note I've gotten on a lot of turkey before, but juicy fruit gum. And I'm also not getting as much oak as I remember getting on Russell's 10, but uh, we'll see how it tastes. Here we go, guys. Cheers. Now I'm getting a lot of that juicy fruit gum on the nose. Again, it's mixed with that typical, that big punch of vanilla that you get from, uh, from wild turkey. A little bit of spice, not as much as I think I remember. This is interesting because already my first impressions is it's kind of doing what Wild Turkey 101 did where it just kind of smoothed out the rough edges a little bit. I kind of like the rough edges. <laughs> yeah, that, that really fruity, sweet profile is now becoming more prevalent, even with my second sip. That nuttiness is still there very slightly. So I feel like there's still like a little bit of a butter pecan thing going on. And ever so slightly, I still think you hit that. Uh, in, in a lot of ultra age wild turkey expressions, you know, Russell's 13, the bottle and bond 17 year master's keep, even some Russell's reserve single barrel picks, get a nice punch of cherry usually. Uh, sometimes it comes off medicinal, sometimes it comes off a little bit more of like a, uh, like a fresh cherry, but, but here, there's, I'm missing it, but it's just, man, it's slightly there. Just a little bit of hint of, uh, of cherry. And on the finish here, I mean, the slightest burst of spice on the back end, slightest burst of, of a black pepper cinnamon type thing going on. I would say it's, uh, it's a short to medium finish. It's not super lingering, but there is a nice little spice that's hanging on. The finish too is where I'm starting to see some brown sugars here too, a little bit of, of sweetness, but that juicy fruit note is kind of carrying through from front to back. 
I mean, it's good. It's as solid as they come. Again, I, I feel like it's a little bit sweeter uh, than it is normally. Uh, let's compare it to the older batch. But before we do that, let's hear from uh, today's sponsor for this video, Shaker and Spoon. You guys have heard me talk about Shaker and Spoon before, and I love their subscription so much that I decided to make some more cocktails and show you just how badass these boxes can be. So included in the box, you get all these different recipe cards that guide you through mixing and garnishing each cocktail step by step, and you even get a glossary that explains any unfamiliar bartending terms. Each box includes all the ingredients other than the alcohol. You have to supply your own alcohol, but you get about enough ingredients for 12 cocktails, four from each recipe. Everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, infusions, hydrosols, and all sorts of crazy stuff. They give you specialty syrups that are all house made, all created in small batches in Red Hook, Brooklyn. This box actually came with lemons. So today I'm breaking in a new box named Kickback with Cognac. Now I love Cognac finished bourbon, so why not make some cocktails with some Cognac by itself? Now the cocktail I'm making is called Spiced Berry Sipper. So for this one, I just need my Cognac that I already poured in my mixer, uh, and then the supplied ingredients of spiced strawberry syrup, Angostura bitters, and lemon oil. Now this all sounds really cool. I never had a Cognac cocktail before, so let's make this thing. All right, so all I gotta do first is add my cognac, which is already in here, my syrups and all my bitters to the mixer. So first things first, spiced strawberry syrup. Well, that just sounds freaking delicious. I need a half ounce of it, so I'm gonna go a little bit more than a half ounce because that just sounds delicious. Next is Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters is pretty common. You see them uh, used a lot in old fashions and a bunch of other cocktails. This one, I need two dashes, not just drops but two full dashes of Angostura bitters. Let's mix it up. All right, straight into a rocks glass over a fresh, large ice cube. I got my glass here, it says nothing a better whiskey can fix. It's very true. <laughs> All right, last but not least, a spritz of lemon oil. Never seen that in a cocktail, but we're gonna Oh, there we go. I think I did two spritzes, but that's okay. I like lemon. All right, let's give it a go. Cheers. Mmm, this, this reminds me of actually kind of a Sazerac, like a more fruit forward Sazerac, a Vucare, one of those, uh, one of those, more of those classic cocktails, but the lemon and the strawberry together is, is really nice. This is great now it's about to get real hot outside because once summer hits, this, this will be a perfect cocktail. It's light, it's fruity, the cognac is there to kind of balance it out. Another hitter from uh, Shaker and Spoon. All right, so while I drink all this, let's recap real quickly. Uh, Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that will deliver these craft cocktails to you. Again, each box has three recipes created by world-class bartenders and enough ingredients for 12 total cocktails. But click the link below in the description or use this code right here, Mash and Drum, at checkout for $20 off your first box. Now go get some fun cocktails delivered to your door, share with your friends, enjoy your summer, and I'm gonna keep drinking this. Cheers, everybody. All right, guys, so now we have a batch here. This is from late last year, and this is the new batch. So for those of you who want to find out, you know, when your bottle's from, you can just kind of look at the back of the bottle. There's a very, very faint laser code on the bottom, uh, bottom back of the bottle. Uh, and you used to have to kind of decipher the different codes. So it would be LL slash, and then a bunch of numbers and letters, and you could kind of figure out what the year and the date was. Now they're just kind of putting it around the bottle here. So this one says 2022 slash 04 slash 19. Let's compare it. Man, so first thing that I, first thing that I notice, the new Russell's 10 with that juicy fruit aspect that it's got going on is a lot sweeter than I'm getting on the older Russell's 10 on last year's version. This one is more of the Russell's 10 than I'm used to, which is the more little bit oak spice a little bit of leather to it, but you still get your typical vanilla and that citrus punch is still there. But I know it just seems like there's a little bit, maybe some older whiskey in it, whereas this is coming off a little bit, or I should say a lot sweeter, at least on the nose. Let's try the palate. Much more of a spice, much more of a cherry punch that I'm missing in this one. Not nearly as fruit forward though. Let me, let me get another sip here. It's a pretty, I'm not gonna say substantial, 
But there are some slight differences here that you can pick up. Wow, then when you go to the new one, I think the biggest difference for me here is that the Russell's 10 year, the new one, it's a little sweeter and more fruit forward than I'm used to from uh, the older bottles here. This Russell's 10, the thing that I loved about it was that it kind of invoked more oak, more spice, a little bit. It seemed like there was some more age in there. I feel like this one is going towards a little bit of a sweeter profile. And for me, this is doing, I think what the new Wild Turkey 101 does. It's lacking the maybe the sweeter oak and spice notes and that hint of cherry that I think to me made it a little bit more agreeable to me than, than even Eagle Rare. Or that, you know, that was the separator from Russell's 10 to Eagle Rare for me. The, believe me, there, there are days I love Eagle Rare. I think it's probably one of the best products that Buffalo Trace makes. But yeah, I think Russell's 10, this, this profile in the older bottle had those standouts. I think the new 10 year for Russell's is actually aligning itself a little bit more with Eagle Rare, just in terms of experience. So the older Russell Reserve, more oak, more spice, a little bit more of a leathery type of vibe to it. Good spice, vanilla, still get your quintessential um, citrus, a little bit of cherry as well. All right, new one. It's the juicy fruit gum. <laughs> the big punch of juicy fruit gum here. It's a little bit sweeter. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind the finish on here either. I'm actually starting to pick up a little bit of chocolate in this Russell's 10. I think it's really good, but I, I do think there are a couple of factors here that could come into play. Now, based on interviews and writings that I've kept up with, with uh, and blogs that I've read from uh, David Jennings at Rare Bird 101. If you guys haven't read his stuff, you need to, especially if you're a turkey fan. Aside from new batches just being new batches, there could be less older barrels being used in the current offering than we're used to from the older offerings. Remember, there was this, you know, small release called Russell's 13 that used a lot of older barrels that could have been maybe taken out of the mix for Russell's 10. That could be one factor. Another factor that folks might point to is back in June 2011, Wild Turkey launched their new state-of-the-art distillery along with a brand new still. So by fall that same year, the new still was churning out a lot of whiskey. And if you do the math, um, the whiskey that was being distilled back then, that's what we're, that's what's being barreled and sipped today. So is the new still a factor? I, I find that hard to believe because you're still using the same yeast strain, you're still using the same mash bill. And I'm sure Wild Turkey went through, you know, put that still through the ringer to get that profile, you know, spot on. Now, lastly, could this have been a profile that Eddie Russell was aiming for? A sweeter, less oaky type of profile to appeal to even more folks looking to try Wild Turkey? It's a trend I've noticed with new whiskeys and blends being crafted to appeal to more of a mass market and not just the whiskey enthusiasts. Now, I'm more inclined to think no because of the Russells historically being so true to tradition, but I don't think it's something you could factor out. Either way, I do think a lot of folks will enjoy the 2022 version of Russell's 10 year. It's sweet, still has a classic citrusy and vanilla forward profile and a 10 year for 38 bucks, particularly when Eagle Rare has become a ghost like most Buffalo Trace uh, products. It's still an amazing value, but for me personally, I still think I enjoy the older batch a little bit more, but there are going to be a lot of people that enjoy this maybe newer fruit forward profile of Russell's 10 year. So fun comparison. I can't wait to see how this opens up. Will it get even sweeter? We'll see down the line. All right, guys, we'll hope you enjoy this review for the new Russell Reserve 10 year, the latest batch, uh, which just landed here by me. Um, if you guys have gotten this and gotten to try the 2022 version, let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you see it's a big profile difference from some of the older Russell's 10 years that you've tried? Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have yet, follow me on Instagram, shoot me a message. I always love talking to you guys. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. More turkey for me. Take care, everybody.